Another thing about evidence. There's a difference between possible and reasonable. You know that, right? That's why the standard of proof is not beyond a possible doubt. It's beyond a reason. Why is it? Why is it beyond a reasonable doubt? Because anything and everything is possible. That's why possible doesn't count. Anything is possible. Who cares about what's possible? It's possible you're not even here. Oh, we've been telling you we're building a new sanctuary. No, we're not building a new sanctuary. We're just disguising the old one because you are now in the mothership. When you walked in the door, we immediately sprayed you with a little bit of alien and, you know, coma-inducing and fluid. And now you think you're watching this. You're not even watching this. You're in a coma right now, imagining this as a group while you're being examined by aliens. That is at least possible, but it's not reasonable. So to help people to understand this, our effort here is to build a circumstantial cumulative case that gets us to beyond a reasonable doubt. We're not going to go beyond a possible doubt because you don't know anything beyond a possible doubt. You don't. There are people right now who are arguing that the entire universe is a computer simulation. Do you know that? Serious philosophers are arguing this. Anything is possible. But not everything is reasonable. And that's why reasonable is the judicial standard. Let me teach you another piece of evidence. Uh, another thing about evidence is important. And that's that every case has unanswered questions. Oh, I can't believe Christianity is true unless I can remove all doubt. Really? Then you can't know anything. Because I can, I can, there's always unanswered questions. I'll even ask jurors before I put them on a jury. Hey, you're the kind of person that needs to have every question answered before you can make a decision. Yeah, I think so, Jim. I need to have every question answered. You're excused. I cannot put you on a jury because I can't answer all your questions. This is a case I had. It's a Dateline case. You might have seen it on TV. It was just on TV about a week and a half ago. This man was arrested for killing his wife, and he got rid of her body, and he said that she ran off. And I could not answer some important questions for the jury because I had no body. So no body missing. I couldn't tell you where her body was, how he killed her, when he killed her, what, how he got rid of her body. I couldn't tell you how he moved her car to make it look like she ran off. I couldn't answer any of these questions. Now, lucky for us, he did change his story over time, and his changing story kind of gave him away. But at the end of all this, I didn't have answers to some of the most significant questions you could ask. And Keith Morrison, now he loves that kind of stuff. So he was just dogging me at the end of the interview, right? I don't even think he's the right guy, Jim. I think you got the wrong guy this time. Uh, really? At sentencing, he confessed to the entire thing and gave us the location of the body. So we know we have the right guy. But I still couldn't answer those questions for the jury, and they convicted him in four hours. I want you to realize that you may have questions right now as somebody who's considering the claims of Christianity, or your friends may have questions, and they might say to you, I could never make a decision this profound unless every question is answered. These folks make decisions involving death penalty cases even though they can't answer every question. And that's okay, because you can never answer every question. And here's the jury instruction for this. The evidence need not eliminate all possible doubt, because everything in life is open to some possible or imaginary doubt. So you can have some possible doubts about Christianity. They may not be reasonable doubts, though. That's the difference.